Now, just wait a cotton picking minute. You're not going to sit here and tell me that Dart Zone not only made one really, really good sidearm this year, but made two? The same company that put out the freaking Deuce Pro made two really good practical sidearms that actually serve a purpose? My camera hates me? I call shenanigans. I call shenanigans. There's no way this one is good. It's good. This is the Desperado and it's good. Let's review it. So like this blaster is small, unimpressive, only costs like $5 and you can get it off Walmart store shelves. It's been a very long time since Dart Zone has released something that's under like $20 that is actually really worth looking at if you are not only a modder, but a legitimate hobbyist. And this is one of those very, very rare occasions. And I'm going to explain all the reasons why that is, starting with the design. Oh my God. It's really fugly. Honestly, the back end, like the red part of this blaster looks super duper cool. I love these little intricate angles and I love this sort of ventilation fan looking thing that's here and is seen on both sides. But once you get to the front end, it is just really fugly. And that's mainly due to the fact that this orange piece goes up more, which gives this thing a big forehead that really doesn't need to be there because it's not hiding anything. There's no intricate mechanics or anything up here besides maybe the cylinder rotation mech, but I doubt it because of the way the cylinder looks, so there's no reason for this piece to be so big. It's just so big for the sake of being so big, and it makes the blaster look really, really goofy. Another unfortunate issue are these pieces of plastic that make up the details. They're fit in really loosely, and they rattle around a tremendous amount from both sides. You can see the pieces rattling around as I just move them around. Like this one specifically, you can see it rocking back and forth, and that gives the blaster an unfortunately unstable feeling when you're just holding it. It makes a ton of noise, and that's not any of the internals rattling around, it's just these four pieces of exposed plastic on the outside. A quick fix for that would be just popping them out, but then you wouldn't have the tactical details. I want the tactical! What about the ergonomics? This blaster just features a grip. It just has a grip, and it is a really big grip. It's one of the biggest grips you could ever imagine. I am zooming this in even more, as it needs to be zoomed in. Look at how big the grip is, oh my god. And the reason the grip is so big is because about 30% of it is a trigger. This is the trigger. Look at how large this trigger is. That begs the question why it's so big, but we'll get into that in due time. Just hold up for me, just wait a minute. The grip is actually pretty comfortable until the part where it's not because you have to stretch all your fingers around the trigger, but it is reasonably comfortable enough. You can make it work even though it definitely could be better. My biggest complaint with the actual grip part of the grip are these ridges that are seen on the back. They're just way too pronounced and they dig into the webbing of your hand and into the palm of your hand to the point where it's actually pretty jarring to hold this blaster for more than just a few minutes at a time. And God forbid you actually run this thing as your dedicated sidearm, it's going to get pretty painful digging into the webbing of your hand right there. It honestly sucks, and I would very much recommend sanding these down if you intend on using this blaster. But how does it work? Simply put, you squeeze the grip, and the blaster does everything all at once, and you can do it five more times. And that is the reason this blaster could be seen as a good purchase for hobbyists, because this is doing something new, and unlike pretty much every offering I've seen before, <coughs> the nail biter, this one is actually doing its job extraordinarily competently, and I've had way less issues with this than I've had with something like the nail biter. And even then, even if I did have those issues, or even if the nail biter worked flawlessly, the smoothness of operation here is astounding. Squeezing this is so buttery smooth. You can't even notice the cylinder rotation. It's so effortless and flawless, and it has such a powerful snap when it actually fires. It is such a satisfying mechanism. 
I could do this for hours. I could literally do this all day. It's just, oh my God, it's pleasant. Not to mention even the little details like turning the cylinder is just so snappy and so reliable and responsive. It has never skipped a cylinder even one singular time, no matter how aggressively or how softly I pull this trigger in, it has never skipped a cylinder one time whatsoever. There has only been one issue I've had with this blaster and that is the catch sometimes failing to reconnect with itself when the trigger hits the forward position. You see, the way this mechanism works is when the trigger returns to the forward position, the catch spring slides down and the catch reconnects behind the trigger, which means that if the trigger isn't in the forward position long enough, the catch won't be able to slide down behind it. So if you release the trigger and then quickly pull it in again, sometimes the catch will not make it and you won't actually fire when you pull the trigger all the way back in. This happens every time I spam the blaster super aggressively. And unfortunately, I'm able to recreate this issue without too many problems when I do want to demonstrate it. Though I will give it a pass, it only happens when you go extremely hard with the blaster. And under normal usage, it doesn't really happen. And it definitely beats trying to completely redesign the whole mechanism to stop that one very specific issue from happening. But still, it is an issue. I need to bring it up. But realistically, Practically speaking, that still isn't the biggest problem. This is an extraordinarily rare Sonic Green Recon. Whoops, I just accidentally dropped this blaster on it, decreasing its value and potentially scuffing it. What is the big difference here? Trigger size. This blaster features a regular size trigger, which you do not want to be touching unless you are trying to actively pull it in. And on this blaster, I can put my index finger up here or up here and have it off the trigger, which means there's no chance of me accidentally touching it. I can swing the blaster around, I can do whatever I want with it, and I will not fire the blaster until I want to fire the blaster. The Desperado's trigger spans the size of the grip, which means in order to hold the blaster, your fingers have to be on the trigger unless you want to change your grip into something like this and hold it like a Lego figure or like a sim. And that feels extraordinarily wrong and just doesn't work at all. The biggest reason why 99% of double action blasters just don't work for people is because of the lack of trigger discipline potential. There's no way to do trigger discipline with something like this because you actively have to have your fingers on the big ass trigger in order to hold the blaster properly. And what's even worse is because it's like this, just holding the blaster firmly could discharge the blaster, which means you could accidentally dry fire it. There's no trigger guard, so if you put it into a holster too far, the holster could fire the blaster. There's so many ways for this to go wrong. And what's even more depressing is the one double action blaster that didn't have a big trigger like this, the Snapfire 8, ignore that it's in pieces, had a humongous issue, a catastrophic design flaw that caused these blasters to shatter and break upon normal use usage, which put a bad name on these regular sized triggers on double action blasters, made the mechanism way too complicated for literally no reason, and made this the norm. So literally every double action blaster I can think of, besides the Snapfire 8, has a big stupid ridiculous trigger like this. But with all that said, I do think that this mechanism is definitely more refined than any of the other ones that I've seen. And I am willing to give this blaster a little bit more credit because it definitely takes advantage of this size trigger and makes it a lot smoother and a lot more reliable than something like the nail biter or the void caster. Let's see this thing fire. So, like, what mod potential does this thing have? 
Sit down, everybody. Get the popcorn because, oh my god, there's a lot that you can do with this thing. You can change out the trigger. You can change out the spring. You can change out the cylinder. You can take the little air restrictor nub thingy out. That thing right there, the stupid uvula-looking paddle thingy that's in front of the barrel. So then you can put half darts in it. There are N1 cylinders for this. There's even ultra cylinders for this thing that actually make ultra darts soar way too far through the air and actually give them some reason to exist. The mod potential of the Desperado is through the roof. It's so high up that I can't even begin to figure out what I want to do with this beauty after I'm finished filming this video and go film the firing demo. That's right, you better look desperate because you're going to be on the chopping block for my despicable mod. So what do I think of this absolute fugly monstrosity that you can get from Walmart for $8? This is one of the best sidearms that's come out this year. Dare I say, it's one of the best sidearms that's come out in like the last five or 10 years period. The biggest issue it has is the oversized trigger, which can be replaced with mods, and even in its stock configuration, it's not nearly as intrusive as the nail biters or the void casters or any others. Still, I would definitely prefer a regular sized trigger, but I'm here picking my poison, and I'm here to say that this blaster is genuinely really good at its job, and I really like it a whole lot. Should you get one? If you don't mind the trigger, and you like what this is doing, being a double action blaster, absolutely pick up a Desperado. It is really good at the job it's trying to accomplish. However, if you like firearm safety, which is probably a good thing to like, and this trigger makes you nervous, please avoid this blaster. Go mod a hammer shot or something else. Because you're going to hate this, it's going to drive you crazy, and you're not going to want to do anything with this blaster because of it. With all that said, if you do want to pick up this beauty, I'm going to link it in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!